So eighth theme of the environmental economics course uh, concerns cost-benefit analysis, and uh, in particular, environmental cost-benefit analysis. Uh, so in this first uh, video lesson, I will introduce you to the to the theme, and uh, and then I will get to more technical details in the in the following following lessons. So let me first start with an uh, illustrative example. And uh, currently here in Finland, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, debate about uh, planned uh, railway projects, which are illustrated on the, on the map here. So we have here on the bottom of the map, there is uh, uh, Helsinki, the capital of Finland. Uh, and uh, there are, have been at least three major railroad projects in the planning stage currently. The, the green rail line would be a faster railway connection to Turku. Then there is the red one to north towards Tampere. And the blue one would be, would be a connection towards uh, eastern Finland uh, towards Kouvola. So this, this um, this kind of uh, railway projects would, of course, require quite massive capital investment. We talk about uh, billions of euros, and uh, then there has been uh, quite quite a lot of critique also that will these kind of uh, investments be um, worthwhile? That will will this uh, will this actually these investments ever ever pay off? And for this purpose, the authorities uh, conduct cost-benefit analysis, uh, like comparing the, the costs of, uh, of uh, building the railroad track and operating it uh, over a longer time period, and then what would be the, the economic benefits in terms of uh, tickets revenues, for example. But there is, of course, already major challenges in the in the like like uh, taking into account wider economic impacts of this kind of uh, uh, major investments uh, so for example i have uh, currently an ongoing project for the prime minister's office of finland uh, uh, trying to look at the into the uh, commuting effects so how how this kind of uh, faster rail connection would affect commuting for example between uh, cities of helsinki and turku and and how to how to estimate this kind of um, impact of commuting on the payroll and and also to the gdp so so there is already challenges if we talk about the economic cost benefit analysis and then the challenge becomes even even somewhat uh, higher if we also take into account the environmental effects so very often this kind of um, uh, environmental effects, uh, if they are not taken into account, they are kind of like externalities of the project. In this situation, uh, when, when we earlier talked about externalities, uh, we, we associated that with the, with the market failure. So in this kind of uh, situation, when we have the uh, public sector organizations planning this kind of large, large uh, public funded uh, projects, then it's kind of more like a government failure if these kind of external effects are not taken into account. So there is also always a risk that, uh, that then uh, some beneficial projects are not implemented. And uh, among those projects that are implemented, they might, might not be the, the best fun ones from the overall societal point of view. So this is why the cost benefit analysis and also taking into account the environmental influences is, is also very critically important, and especially in this kind of massive, uh, massive uh, infrastructure projects. So, of course, uh, like one of the motivations of, uh, of investing in the railroads is to uh, the reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions. So, uh, uh, aiming to the to become the first carbon neutral uh, nation uh, of course finland needs to to reduce a lot of um, greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector so investing in the faster uh, railway connections would potentially help to decrease emissions from the passenger cars and passenger car traffic but of course nothing nothing really comes for free 
So of course, also also building new railroads might have also uh, undesirable environmental impacts. Uh, so for example, then uh, the new railroad might uh, might for example disconnect some patches of forest, and it would be also like loss of loss of some some forest and agricultural lands, and this can of course then. Uh, also potentially have some negative impacts on the local ecosystem and communities. So even if we consider the just the environmental effects there, there would be uh, also potentially some kind of trade-offs that, uh, that, uh, that uh, making this kind of investment would, would uh, uh, improve the situation in perhaps in some, some environmental aspects, but also then perhaps make, uh, make things worse in some other aspects. So this is why then, then it is important to make some careful, uh, careful analysis of this uh, uh, expected impacts and what would be the costs and benefits. So here is this kind of uh, illustration that is taken from the uh, OECD report, uh, particularly focusing on cost benefit analysis and the, and the environment. So like this, uh, like this um, slide illustrates, so we are essentially comparing costs and benefits. So, so obviously then, then this kind of decision to invest, for example, then depends on that, okay, are the, cost, are the benefits higher than the costs? And then also if there are alternative investment projects, like in this kind of uh, example with these three alternative uh, railroad projects that, uh, that if, we, if we have only uh, limited budget available then then uh, which of these uh, projects would be would be prioritized to be implemented first so so this requires this kind of um, comparison of benefits and costs and if we want to also take environmental and, and social impacts into account then then an important step is to somehow monetize the these uh, environmental effects so so measure these environmental effects in monetary terms and this is the the actually uh, forms the theme number nine in this in this course so i will come back to this kind of environmental valuation a little bit later on but another challenge is also that uh, typically these costs and benefits occur at different points in time typically you need to have, have this kind of large initial investment and then the benefits occur over a long period of time. If you think about the uh, railroad project, then, then uh, railroad would be used over several decades, if not centuries. So, so there's typically very long time horizon during which the benefits will be uh, occurring, but costs occur immediately. And this is also this kind of balancing act that how do we, how do we compare this kind of immediate costs versus future future benefits. So in this OECD report, there was also uh, a survey conducted in, in the OECD member states and the survey respondents were asked to that uh, and are the greenhouse gas emissions uh, taking into account in the, in the cost benefit uh, analysis and there are there are two types of uh, projects where these are uh, particularly relevant. One is transport, like like this kind of uh, railroad projects that I, I mentioned as a, as a motivating example. Another obviously is energy. So of course, in energy sector is one of the uh, biggest uh, source of greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see that. Uh, Nowadays, also the OECD report was published in 2018, so some some years ago already. But uh, you can see that uh, from this uh, this uh, this kind of uh, histogram that uh, there are in in many countries the greenhouse gas emissions are uh, perhaps not entirely systematically, but uh, but uh, but very often taken into account. Uh, but then there exist also countries where where they are still still remain to be ignored and um, it interestingly it seems that in the transport project it's more common already to take into account the greenhouse gas emissions but somehow in energy projects where perhaps it might be even more important uh, the the emissions are not taken into account when when making the cost benefit analysis of 
for example, that uh, should we invest in uh, in uh, building more uh, more wind energy or solar energy or, or or perhaps nuclear power plants. So obviously, the the greenhouse gas emissions should be already like uh, factored in. I don't know if this how this uh, exactly this uh, survey was conducted, but uh, and how how the survey questions were phrased that uh, would, for example, this um, uh, price of the uh, emission permits already like uh, like uh, factor in even if even if there's like not some kind of separate assessment of the greenhouse gas emissions, or perhaps if there are if there are kind of. Uh, clean energy projects. So if, if it is wind turbines, we talk about then perhaps the uh, greenhouse gas emissions do not need to be taken into account anymore. M perhaps this kind of uh, kind of uh, explanation there might be why why in energy sector this share of uh, responses is lower. I'm, I'm not fully sure, but this is this is kind of anyway illustrating you that uh, that uh, nowadays uh, uh, taking into account at least some of the environmental impacts uh, is is uh, increasingly common. So in the next video lesson, I will then um, go to a little bit more technical details and discuss the net present value test. See you then. Bye-bye.